Val Gilbert. For those of you that do not know me, I've been involved in network marketing for 40 years. Awesome profession. Started in it broke. Sold a junk truck to get started. Put $200 into my business. The last 27 years I've been full time, so. started right now how about that and then <clears throat> um, let me make sure I don't overlook anybody and um, so um, you know uh, Chantyana asks a good and she's in Nashville Tennessee she has a good question um, though originally she's uh, from Russia um, Tatyana asks, uh, how to not repel customers? You know, I think um, my, hey, Nicole, nice to see you. My first gut reaction to that <clears throat> is not come across as salesy, if you get what I mean, salesy. I mean, like, I, I know that when I go and I look, when I'm looking for a car to buy, I like to spend time alone with the car. I don't want the salesman there, right? And when I see one coming, I'm thinking, um, Yellow Lie in Northeast India, good to see you. Um, anyway, so I just want some time alone. I don't want to be sold. I want to sell myself. I want to sell myself. And, and so what we have to, uh, and this is going to also address, someone else had a question in relation to this. Um, and who was that? Um, let me see. Um, okay, so, yeah, I th it was somewhere I saw that. I don't know. Um, okay, so th the point is, you know, that what people buy are experiences. What people buy are feelings. What people buy are states. That is a state that they want to go into, they, a state they want to escape into. Kevin, nice to see you. Um, MX, man, I don't know that state. <laughs> That's probably Mexico. <laughs> anyway, um, so states, feelings, things like that. Um, so, you know, it's like when you ladies, if you if you think of a dream luxury car that you would really love to have, you don't care what's under the hood. You don't care about the electronics in the panel. What you care about is how you feel when you go down the road. How you feel and how it makes you feel. The same way when you put on a dress, you know, that as far as all the trouble that it, that was created just to make that dress, all the details to make that dress, how many hours they spent making that dress, that's not a concern to you. You just want to be able to stand in front of the mirror and just say, oh my gosh, this is, I, you know, I am so hot. You know, <laughs> you know, that's what you want. And if you can get, same thing, 
about, you know, um, somebody in the questions here was talking about uh, something else, but you know, when we talk about, let's just say a weight loss product, you could go on and talk about all the features in a weight loss product. You could talk about the ingredients, the science and things like that. That's not what she, she doesn't care about that. She cares about getting in that dress she's not been able to get into in the last five or six years. And if she can lose that 30 pounds, I mean, and, and get back into that dress, it's like going back in time. I mean, she feels like a whole new person. So what we're selling really are feelings. We're selling outcomes, but we're really not selling. We're simply being the person, the consultant, that is like the, you know, we're just, we're the tour guide that's gonna take them to where they wanna go. And we have to approach it that way and approach it with, you, you know, don't, don't get addicted to the outcome. Don't be concerned about whether they're going to join. Don't be concerned about whether they're going to buy. Your job as a consultant is only to give the information, but you have to know what it is they're buying. Well, you say, well, I, I know what they're buying. It's the shake I'm selling. No, that's not. I'm going to tell you right now, they don't care about your product. They don't care about my product. They're not looking for your product. They're not looking for my product. What they're, what they're wanting to do is to experience those feelings, those states. And if you as the tour guide can be a consultant instead of a salesperson, and you can, you can help them understand they're going to get that, but you're not going to do it by science. Again, you can, uh, you know, a lot of people will do that. They'll add them to their Facebook groups and check out the stories. I'm sure that could be you too. You might share a story in Facebook Messenger after you've added them to a group and say, I'm sure this could be you. But you're not going to spend all your time just blasting them with information. Um, anyway, so, um, so how not to repel customers is just to give them what they want and understand what they're buying. And it's not your product. That's the thing. Um, and um, the one person asked about closing. Uh, Abdigbo. Boy, that's a name, man. I'm going to come to that in a minute because someone else asked that. So we'll wait and we'll get to that person when we're going to ask that. And then so uh, Julie from the United Kingdom, from England, she said, how do you, how do you, how to create excitement and speed when recruiting? Excitement and speed. Well, um, if some of you have been following up on this Chinese girl that's here, <clears throat> I was just checking her volume, and in two weeks she did over 20,000 points. Twenty, and, she, and she's new to network marketing. She's never done it before. I, I'd say she's a perfect example of creating excitement. What were the words? Excitement, Julie and speed um but you know i i want you to understand though if she's never if she's new to network marketing i know it's like how the heck she do that okay it has a lot to do with state doesn't it state and you've heard me and i'm talking about getting very clear on what you want and 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 i don't want you to think she's a wonder woman okay because this is a girl that came, and she'll tell you, from a middle-class family in China, okay? Uh, she loved reading books when she was little. Matter of fact, they wouldn't let her or anyone in that community take books home. If you want to read them, you got to go to the library. And she had just this obsession about reading books, and she reads about 300 a year. Um, she can speed read with retention, and, and prior to joining Network Marketing, she was uh, coaching classes, online classes on this very subject, how to do that. But when she was little, because they didn't let you uh, let them take books home, when it came about time when the library was closing, she hid in the library. When they locked up, she spent the whole night reading books until they came back and unlocked the door. I mean, that's how obsessed she was about learning and wanting to learn. Um, so she really pushed herself. So, um, when we think about it, state getting clear on what you want and then have a, 
a burning desire to commit to it, that that's what you're going to do. It doesn't matter. Circumstances are never going to dictate whether you still want that or not. It's not, that's not going to change a thing. So in other words, if you lose your job or if people quit in your downline, that's not going to, that's not going to alter your, your purpose and your commitment to what you're doing. You're going to be able to teach a, a sense of urgency. I can tell you this girl. And again, I want, so, because I don't want some of you feeling bad. When I shared that story, you know, I was talking to my friend, Ray Higdon, and he said, Jeff, when you shared the story, you should also have shared her struggles. <laughs> Okay, you know, I, she had struggles, okay? But I'm not gonna go in the whole history of that. Um, but I can tell you that because she did have struggles. But um, I can tell you that I was on the first Zoom call she did. She had 40 people on Zoom calls. Now, keep in mind, she spent a lifetime, you know, getting some education, a lot of education. She was educated in London. She has an MBA, a degree in this, a degree in that, whatever. Um, but you know, so she created a lot of relationships with people who are very influential kind of people. In other words, people just like herself, people that wanted to get ahead in life, right? And so some of these people own their own businesses. Some, one, one of her best leaders is a, is a film director in China. And I saw pictures with her and some very famous American actors. So her circles of influence um, are, are the kind of people that are very driven. So you remember, I've talked about this on previous Facebook lives that <clears throat> what gets frustrating is when you come in this business and you don't have the kind of results that you see a girl like this have, right? Um, well, you got to understand she paid into a lot of relationships over the years, a lot, a lot. And like a bank account, if you go into a bank account and you're consistently making deposits, uh, then you can make withdrawals later on, can't you? But you can't withdraw something that you never deposited. And so she made a lot of deposits and a lot of relationships. So then when she joins her first network marketing company, now she wants to make the withdrawals. So that's what she did. And so she had 40 people on her first Zoom. I was standing there. <clears throat> And she made it very, you know, clear about what the product was, how much it is to join. And that's what you have to do. And then she, she says, okay, all I want to know right now is, are you with me or not with me? If you're with me, stay on this Zoom call. If you're not with me, get off the call now. <laughs> and that was what she said, you know. And that's some strong mental posture right there. But that's leadership. That's leadership. And so um, the results were the majority joined. And then the calls kept. And then what? And, and, and again, going back to uh, what Julie's comment was, creating excitement and speed. Well, that's what she did. She said the timing is right. It's perfect. The, the opportunity is incredible. You have to move and you have to move fast. So you have to create that kind of, that sense of urgency, that fear of loss. If I don't move now, I'm gonna really miss out. And so as a result, I mean, every day her calls were filling up. Uh, I was on a Zoom with her yesterday. She had 78 on another Zoom call. And so I'm just saying, and, and keep in mind, She's doing it for my home and, and way back in China, right? And she's building a team. And every day she wakes up, she looks and a, a lot more people are added to her group. You got to create that. So again, don't, don't get discouraged when you say, well, I don't have that, that kind of return for my time. Hey, Eden, um, I don't, I don't have that, you know, well, again, you don't compare yourself to others. You know, if it's going to take you longer to get there, what does it matter? You get there. It's, it's through persistence, persistence. That's what wins. And the only people that lose are the ones who quit. Um, so um, now I'm moving on from Julie. And then um, Brandon says, can you break down how to go about doing a 90 day blitz? I'm starting in March. Well, here's the thing, my book, Reaching the Peak, that's the back, 
back version of it, backwards version. Reaching the Peak, it's in Amazon.com. Uh, you can get that book, Reaching the Peak. And basically, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it would take too much time on this call for just one question. But if you would just read the book, anyway, it's really clear in the book. Um, first month, what you have to do, first of all, in a 90-day plan, get clear on what you want. And then get clear on who is, who is it going to involve. Now, if that means it's going to involve um, um, time away from the family, you have to let the family know that you're going to do a 90-day blitz. Um, and then also understand it doesn't just involve you. It's going to also involve a team. That is a team of leaders. And the best thing you can do in a 90-day blitz is get some of your existing team members to do a 90-day blitz with you. You're going to see a much better outcome because, you know, if, if you're the only one running and they're not, that's a problem, isn't it? Just like this girl I just mentioned, she wanted to create a strong um, sense of speed, dedication to speed. I can remember 21 years ago, that's what I did. I set the speed and the speed of the leader determines the speed of the pack, the speed of the team. If you have urgency, they have urgency. If it's slow and steady, then they're gonna be slow and steady. So it, it, that's up to you. So the thing is, get those people on board in your 90 day plan. So that your first 30 days, especially for those of you that are new, <clears throat> you're gonna wanna identify, let's just say six people. I talk about that in my book, six people. You wanna find six drivers. Drivers are dedicated people who are gonna work the business. Now they're not gonna all be equally strong, nobody is. So some are gonna be stronger than others of the six. At the end of the day, you hope that you'll at least have three very strong legs. That's the idea. And so that first 30 days is you wanna identify them. Well, if you already um, are, have been in your company and you got some of your leaders committed to doing this with you, well then they would count as some of the six, wouldn't they? And then, so what you, what you have to do is figure out who do you need or who do you not have do you need to sponsor new people? And then in the second month, once you have those six identified, in that second uh, month, you wanna make sure they duplicate just what you did. So that at the end of the second month, you have at least 36, 36 people. Now what you do with those people and how you help those six in that second month especially, is you dedicate time to each one of them. And so I talked about that. There might be, <clears throat> Let's say you, of the six, they're all committed to what you're committed to. And so then each day of the week and possibly weekend, you're committed that day to work with that leader. So that's a day dedicated for them for a whole entire month, right? And so then we're talking about the second month of the business. Because what you want to do is you want to train them. It's a monkey see, monkey do business, right? So you want to train these leaders about the business, how to talk about the product, how to talk about your company, how to talk about the opportunity, um, you know, things like that. And so what they're gonna do is those six are going to expose their prospects to you and, and, they're, gonna, and, and they're gonna watch you go into action basically. And that is they've opened the door, that person, their prospect is open to looking at your opportunity and, you, and, and so those six, well, each of them on at least four different experiences, four different days in a month, be able to see you explain your company, your product, and your opportunity to that person. It might include sending that person a video. You can do this offline, you can do this online. Either way, it works the same. Whether you meet them at Starbucks, or whether you, you know, or it's a meeting you organized, or if you're doing it on a Zoom call, just like that girl, man, she's building on Zooms. She, you know, that's it doesn't matter. So let's just say on Monday, I tell John, okay, John, I'm going to be with you. Monday's dedicated to you. Debbie, Tuesday's de uh, dedicated to you. Barbara, Wednesday is dedicated to you. And you can do that all the way up, different people, um, all the way up to Saturday, take Sunday off if you want. 
So, and then after they've seen you do that, and we're talking about each of them on four different days during the whole entire month, they, they know how to do this. They've worked with you enough. They've got a good sense of it now. So now, now they, they, they don't have that fear anymore that they have to be a superstar or something like that. Uh, so then in month three, what are you going to do? Well, then you're going to have out of those six, and they're doing the same thing, right? Sponsoring collectively 36 to give you a very strong foundation. Your third month, <clears throat> you're getting familiar with the people those 36 know. And then you're, what you're looking for is in all of those six legs, some other serious drivers that can drive your business. That's, and then you get in there and you, what we call taproot, you drop down there, you work with those people, you help those people. The rest of the information you could get out of the book. So, um, okay, so I'm going to go down now to, um, you know, so then Susie Mar uh, Martinez asked the question, how to make an effective closing without losing posture. Okay, so, you know, here's, I, I think, the important thing here. Again, don't come across salesy. Don't get um, so addicted to the outcome that they have to join you, that it's important that they join you. Um, don't get worried about asking them to spend money because it does cost money to join a company. It's not like the kind of money people spend on traditional businesses, not even close. We're talking about it's not much more money than what people would spend on a weekend, you know, just taking the family out and having a good time. Um, so, uh, you know, just understand that to have an effective close, it simply means that, again, you be the consultant. See yourself as a consultant, not as a salesperson, not as a network marketing person. You're trying to get that person to make the right decision. And the right decision may be not to join you. <laughs> he said, what? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, if, if they've got the wrong expectations of what you do and what, what they're going to get from it, it's only going to create problems for you down the road. So you're better off not to, it's not even worth a bonus, whatever you get on, on uh, enrolling that person when they buy products, right? So, so, but here's the thing that you can, you can ask them is that after you've sent them a video and they've seen your product, they understand your product, they understand the opportunity, then you can just simply ask them a couple of questions that if you see something here that you feel has great value, do you feel, do you feel like you saw that? And they said, well, yes, I, I do. Okay, good. Very good. So if you were to get involved based on what you saw and how you felt about what you saw, how much money would you like to earn from this? Let's say, uh, let's say in a month, in a month, how much money would you like to earn? And give them a moment. If they say a thousand dollars a month would be great. Say, awesome, awesome. Say, so then how much time would you be willing to commit to each week to get that thousand dollars of residual income coming to your home every month into your family life? How much time during the, uh, you know, during the week would you do that? And when if they say, well, I'd be willing, I could probably fit in about five hours a week. Great. Awesome. And then how many months would you be willing to do that? That is that five hours a week. How many months would you be willing to do that to see that you have a solid thousand dollars a month of extra income that's going to make that difference in your family life? How many months would that be? Well, I'd like to see that happen within six months. Okay, great. So if I can show you a plan to get there, a plan to get there so that you could achieve that, is there any other questions that I need to answer before you get started? No? Okay, great. Then let's get started. And here's the thing that you have to do. 
you have to simply be familiar with how you make money in your company. You know, what does it take to make a thousand dollars? And if, if they said five, well then just multiply that activity by five. The thing is you gotta get familiar with, you don't have to be an expert on your comp plan. You don't have to explain your compensation plan. All you have to do is just give them activity an activity example of what they gotta do to make money. So that's what I would do, Susie. That's the effective way to close is you lead them as a consultant to the conclusion that there's, you know, there's nothing missing here. The only thing that's missing is they're not in yet and they need to take action. So now Christine Rogers has a question about content creation. I'm in a health and wellness company. <clears throat> Do I need to create content around health and wellness? Even though I am far from being an expert in the field. Neither do I feel I want to be. I do talk a lot about inner growth and self-development, taking people on a journey. It feels right to me. How do I take this to having a conversation about my products or business opportunity? I would love your advice on this. Well, again, uh, you know, Ju uh, Christine, I mean, excuse me, Christine. Um, no, here's what you don't want to do. You know, as soon as you want to, you, well, I know you don't want to do this because you just said you don't want to do this, but others will do this when they're in a health and wellness company. Some want to become the expert. You know, I've seen some of the even really great leaders I've had uh, in the past. And for some reason, they just wanted to, they develop an ego and they want to come across as educated. So they decide to spend all their time studying health and things like that. Meanwhile, their business goes down um, where before they took a leadership position and they taught people how to make money, how to become successful. Um, so I think what you're doing is right. On the other hand, there's nothing wrong with uh, discussing um, health. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, think about it. It's hard to be successful if you're sick. It's hard to be successful if you don't have energy. It's hard to be successful if you don't feel good. Um, our, our, our bodies do affect our minds, right? Um, but it's okay to, it's okay to do that, to take some interest in that, share it from time to time. Um, and because you ask, how do I take this to having a conversation about my products or business opportunity? You know, one thing, you know, I, I talked about this in the past, you can mumble, you can mumble. For example, if I'm in my gym um, and I'm doing a certain workout, maybe on the weights, maybe I'm working on legs and, or arms or my back, I don't know. And then I said, you know, I just, and when I'm doing a lot, I'm talking about, uh, you know, what I love about working out, what I get out of it. And then <clears throat> I can say, you know, I started using a protein product. I finally found one that really fits my criteria and it's given me the results I was really looking for. If you haven't found a, a product like that, just reach out to me, I'll be glad to help you. And oh, by the way, you know, next week I'll be doing, and then I go and I go and talk about something else, you know, that I'll be doing in the gym. And then in the meantime, they're going, what, what? Because that's mumbling. They're like, what, what? What did, what did he say about this? protein product and so um, <laughs> and then next thing you know they're sending you a message hey tell me more about that or you or you're a woman and again you're just talking about certain clothes you like you're just you're just doing a Facebook live yeah I finally got into my closet have you guys ever done that got in your closet and and you and, and, and you and you girls uh, you found a dress that good grief I haven't I haven't been able to get in that thing and four years, I'm going to tell you, I finally got back in to this dress. I am so excited. I'm so pumped up. In fact, me and my husband are going out. We're going to go out, you know, uh, tonight and we're just going to have a great time. I feel so good now. I got more energy, you know, and I finally found something to help me. So I don't know if you've ever, you know, look for something to help you with your weight loss, um, you know, your weight loss goals. And I'm not a salesperson and 
Yeah, I think you. I think all of you know that. But man, I'll tell you what. It sure feels good to get back in this dress. And see what I mean? That's mumbling. You're not talking about your company. You're not talking about your products. The only thing you're doing is creating curiosity. And then they're going to reach out to you. And they're going to say, girl, what are you doing? I've got to know this. Because I've got dresses in my closet that I haven't been able to fit in. And, you know, I, I just I, I just want to be that girl again. So that's mumbling. Try that. So Eden in Colorado says, cold messaging versus creating conversation to promote your opportunity, which has worked for you. I can tell you, Eden, that <clears throat> with all the social media hype, um, and and I, I find most of the people in social media not very social, conversation works. People do want to connect. I, mean, I remember the days when the VCR came out. When was that? It was back in the 80s. The VCR came out, and uh, they said that would be the end of theaters. The movie theaters would close up. That would be the end of it. Because now people could buy movies and watch movies from their home. Well, they underestimated the fact that people like to get together and share and experience events. They like that. And so, and it proved to be true because theaters, I mean, you have them in your town, right? In your cities, you have many of them. And, and so people just love, despite the fact, well, yes, we can watch it on Netflix. We can, I can download a movie from Apple and, and, you know, just wait a few weeks after it's already hit the theaters. Why do I want to go through the trouble of going to a theater? And yet my kids are always dragging me there, right? But people do. So... Uh, despite all the hype about social media, um, the truth of the matter is people do want to talk. People do want to connect. And when I, as a matter of fact, um, you know, just, well, I'm just saying. And anytime I go to a, in, in public, I always reach out to people. I reach out to people, talk to people, and, and just get to know people and see if I can connect with someone. Especially if it looks like someone I can really, you know, have a relationship with, a friendship. Um, and uh, what are you reading right now, Jeff? Oh, Jennifer says, what am I reading right now? Well, re reaching the peak. <laughs> That's a commercial, right? <laughs> Joking with you. Uh, how about Sir John Templeton? It's backwards. So it says, from Wall Street to Humility Theology. He was the first billionaire after the Great Depression hit. He was the first billionaire. And what he did was he put a few dollars on different stocks. When everybody bailed out, he bought in. And he was the one that created that cliche, money's made in the winter. Opportunity is in the winter. Some people are freezing, other people are skiing. And he was one. And he came from a small town in Tennessee where I grew up, same town he grew up. And there, there's evidence of that man. When you go back to my hometown, it's amazing. Uh, what, you know, when, after he died, he left a lot of money to beautification product projects that are still maintained today. So um, anyway, I like reading different books like that. But, uh, so, uh, but going back to Ed, uh, Eden, Anytime you can get somebody on the phone, you're going to be better off. Uh, you can cold message somebody. Yeah, you can do that. But it just, you know, they don't know you. That's really what it's about. I'll tell you what. It, and again, I don't mean to keep going back to this Chinese girl, but I will only because it's just she's only been here um, a couple of weeks. She did everything more in market. I mean, she's got over 20,000 volume, over 100 people on her team. All of that was warm market. None of that was cold market. I'm telling you, most of the, you know, these, you know, these social media rock stars, I mean, they're, they're pumping a lot of money into promoting what they're doing. But how duplicatable is that at the end of the day? I think that's, it, it, it'll take you so far and that's it. And, um... But I'll tell you what, how do you keep people when you don't have relationships with them, even if you get them in? Does anybody get the value of what I'm saying here? 
Isn't it, doesn't it make sense to you? Um, so I'd much rather get on a conversation. And then Anad uh, Shitti from India says, how do you attract people with long-term thinking mindset? Well, he's from India, so <laughs> I understand the motivation of his question, okay? Because in India, they jump. Oh, man, they jump. It's like the company of the week. You know, what company are you in this week? Um, you know, so again, um, my friend, you're going to have to show them that um, they're never going to get wealthy or, you know, in network marketing if they keep jumping. You got to get in a company and stay in a company. If you look at my success of 21 years, it's because I stayed in a company 21 years. Now, if they didn't treat me right or they were doing things that were wrong or I would, sure I would leave, but they haven't done that yet. So, so if it, it, you know, that's the thing uh, you're just going to, I understand where you're coming from, but you have to set them down and ask them how much money do they want to make? And, uh, how long are they willing to commit to that? And will they stay the course? I mean, you got to get them to commit. I mean, here's the thing. When you sit down with that person, my friend, just be right up front. Say, look, I won't quit you if you won't quit me. Can we agree to that? My job is to help you. But if you will not do your job, I don't have a job. And I want to have a job, but you got to do your part. I think it's important that we sell the rain, not just the rainbow. Okay. We've got to, they have to understand it's not going to be easy, that there's going to be bad days. There's going to be bad experiences. Some people are, Hey Rick, nice to see you. There's going to be, there's going to be people that are going to quit and it's going to hurt you because some of these people are you're close to and you're going to be very disappointed by it. But it's the ones that stay, that stay around who are just like you who are going to make you a fortune because you don't need everybody. You just need a few drivers. And that's the thing we have to understand. That's, that's what you have to understand, my friend. You want to find those people. But... Some people get it in their head. I know, I know India. I lived in India. I had a house in Mumbai. Okay. And, uh, I know, I know what, what, what people are like there. I do. I mean, I'm talking about people in network marketing and how they jump. And, and so, but that's, that's the thing that they have to understand is they're never going to get wealthy. If they do that, they think it's all about timing, timing and positioning. Timing and positioning. Oh, new company. Jumps on the new company. When does the new company become an old company? Oh, in about six weeks, man. <laughs> then they jump for another company. Um, just get them, ask them this question. Look at any of those people who have done that. Are they really doing well? They're not doing well. They're all broke. They're totally broke. They got nothing. So, um... Those you have to sit them down and reason and use the you know use those expert. Now I'm going to go to George really quick and see what he sent me. Um, and this was a question. This is from Alexis and how to get a person to buy product more than once. Well, if you're in a country where they have auto ship like the United States, get them on auto ship. Just, you know, explain to that person, you know, for example, if you're in a health and wellness company and they're going to get involved with you, say, well, listen, um, you know, so let's get you set up on auto ship so you never have to remember to order because you get busy like me, you're going to forget, right? You're going to get busy. And if they bring an objection like, you, you know, well, you mean I got to be on it every month? My answer to that always is, well, what month do you not want to be healthy? Tell me what month that is this year. You don't want to be healthy. Well, I no, I want to be healthy every month. Oh, okay. Well, then we need to get you on auto ship. 
Now, if you don't have auto ship, if you don't have auto ship, <clears throat> for example, in different countries, even in China, um, they don't have auto ship. In Korea, for example, uh, the government has it there where you cannot make it mandatory that they be on an auto ship or that they even buy um, product to qualify their position. Um, you know, then some some companies, and you can do this yourself, though it's a little, uh, I don't know what country you're in, unless if it's Mexico, I'm just guessing. Um, then, then hopefully your company, and I would encourage your company to do this. I know they do this in China, in our company. They're going to send them out text messages during the month, and they're going to have a coupon with it. The coupon is going to be a savings that they're going to get if they order now. But they get about four or five of these uh, before the month is over, and the, and, and the results on that is pretty good. So talk to your company about that. I'm sure. I'd be surprised if they weren't texting out, reminding people to uh, purchase. Now, the question, too, is from Mernita in Guatemala uh, to send a 15-minute is okay or is too long. Okay, so let me translate that. I guess what this person is saying is when you send a video, is that right, George? When they're talking about sending a video, is uh, is is a 15 minute video too long? It just depends on how, how interesting your video is. <laughs> okay, I mean, we live in the age where Facebook considers a view on a video, a view is three seconds. <laughs> I watched it three seconds. What are you gonna do in three seconds? <laughs> Boy, you better be good. Okay, uh, so generally the norm is, uh, you know, is like 10 minutes. Uh, but, you know, if your video is good, use it. And so, um, let me see. that. Oh, yeah, that's it. Okay, done with that. And then question three is from Maria. Uh, what, cold, what cold marketing message will be good to connect with people I don't know? Okay, all right, so if you don't know, then what I recommend is have some engagement with that person before you, you message them. I mean, you could send a person a message and see if they're open, but frankly, a lot of people are getting that, right? So what I recommend, again, it goes back to how social are you in social media? And when you add people to a page, engage with them in their pages. When they have a post about their children, compliment them about their beautiful children. Say some things, engage with them, or and then send them a message. Say, boy, I love those shoes on your daughter. If you don't mind me asking, where did, where did you buy them? Because I have a daughter. I would love to get a pair of shoes like that. You know, just things like that. You're trying to get them uh, where they're talking to you where they're messaging back with you. And I'm not saying endless rapport, but but frankly, I mean, think about it, you know. Uh, you know, if, if, there's, if you've got no rapport, you don't know this person at all, you're at a disadvantage, okay? That's the reason why I always encourage people when they join, work your warm market, please. I want you to make money because engagement does take time. And, um, but that's what you're going to have to do. If you want to get a better response is have some engagement before that. I'm not saying let it go on for months and months. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying have some of it over, you know, a short period of time. And that's something I would do. And so is, I guess, George, that's unless we have another question here, um, on our free Friday. And if you, someone wants to ask one other question or, and there's not a dumb question. Okay. So don't, um, yeah. Rosia says two minutes communication, je, je, oh, two minutes. Uh, well, okay. Um, 
yeah, okay. I'm not really sure about what Jessica meant, but uh, very good. So here's the thing, everyone. I'm Thanks for getting on tonight. Uh, Eden says, my last question is, when can I be adopted? <laughs> I've been waiting for a while. <laughs> when, when, <laughs> when can I be adopted? Listen to this. Uh, uh, Mitch says, what is your opinion of partnerships? Uh, partnerships? Uh, no. No, I don't believe in partnerships, Mitch, because you're talking about a network marketing position. The problem with partnerships is one is always going to work harder than the other or neither one will work, you know? And so if you were new to this network marketing, what group, what group of 10 people would be a good plan? I don't know what that question means. Sorry, Adrian. He's in Hong Kong. What group of 10 people to be a good plan or an individual is better? I'm sorry, my friend, I'm, I'm missing your question. Um, let's see, uh, I'll try to clarify it. And do you think, do you think I would be wrong if I, I'm prospecting people and I'm looking for people that want to build wealth? Brandon Flood. Um, well, no, uh, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for people who want to make money, Brandon, right? Um, I'm sorry if I'm not understanding you clearly, but uh, of course, um, I'm not, you know, if you're in a health and wellness company, what you're not looking for is sick people. I mean, I've seen these people, they want to chase ambulances, you know, it's crazy. I mean, it's like they go around like, hey, hey, how are you? Oh, well, I'm okay. Oh, you're not, you're not okay? Uh, you mean you like you're sick? Oh, I got this product. This product's unbelievable. This product will change your health, blah, blah, blah. You know, actually they do that in India a lot. You know, because I, I, my, my, the earlier question that he was, he was from India. I just know that in that country, a lot of people over there, when they do push health and wellness, are always chasing sick people. You know, that never interested me. Um, so yes, you want to find people who want to build a business. And, um, and so, uh, let me see. And so I never, and my friend uh, from the UK, Adrian, I apologize. Um, I know you're new to network marketing. Um, so um, feel free to just private message me, I guess. And you, oh, there you go, you came back. Okay, would you approach one person or a group of 10? Uh, as it would take less time, but it might be harder to talk with 10 as I am new. Okay, so now you're, you're saying, would you prospect 10 at once uh, versus doing it individually? So um, here's the thing. People don't like being herded like cows. In Tennessee, we, we live in the country. People don't like being herded. They like being felt like they're special. They like the VIP. But when you herd 10 people together, here's the problem with it. Sometimes a person, one of the 10 can be, you know, let's just say nine are positive, but one says, wait a second. I read a negative article this morning on Google. Google about network marketing and how people lose money in that and no one ever makes money in network marketing now all of a sudden these nine people that were positive are not so positive because you got one toxic person in the group that spoiled it that's a downside number one again people don't like being herded they like the vip treatment they like the one-on-ones yes it does take more work number two if you have a toxic person and, and that, that can ruin it. And I've seen this in Facebook groups. I've seen this over and over again in Facebook groups too, where someone in the group becomes toxic and they dump all their negativity and where you had a group that was very positive, moving very well. Then now all of a sudden, some of the leaders start second guessing everything. And then even questioning the top leader who created the group. And so that's the problem with that. 
So Adrian, what, um, what I would do is so that you don't have that experience, you just, you know, see, you know, do it one-on-one -on -one because you're going to get better results if you do. And then, um, okay. So then George sent me a question from Rulo from Mexico. <clears throat> is it better to talk to a contact about the industry or about your company? Well, you're not going to make any money if you're just talking to people about the network marketing industry and why it's so great, right? Um, again, when you talk about your company, that's the very industry you're in. Um, here's the one thing we got to keep in mind though we do want to, you know, people, and we've heard this said by critics is that if your focus is on recruiting and not product sales, you're a pyramid scheme. Well, that's a bunch of nonsense because you're not going to sell products if you don't recruit enough people to talk about the product. That would be like trying to sell McDonald's hamburgers and you don't have any franchises out there. Why do they have so many franchises out there? So they can move a lot of burgers. So, so I'm going to talk about, <clears throat> again, the very basis for your, pro your opportunity is your product. It's not network marketing. I mean, yeah, that's, that's called leverage. That's how you make money. But the basis uh, of your opportunity is your product. Okay. But what, what's exciting about your product is that there is a network marketing opportunity with it. And that's what you have to focus on. So, um, and then George, I think ran out. Yes, he did. And so it's been fun getting together with you guys tonight, really on your Friday night, you're with me, you know? So I'm going to go to the hot tub. And if you guys want to come and join, come on. We'll have some fun. <laughs> Everyone, have a great evening and have an awesome weekend. I really love all of you guys. You're incredible. Hey, Mindy, miss you. Come on, come on over to the hot tub. <laughs> Everyone, have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.